Hello YouTube, welcome to this issue of the Ghostlight Social. I realise I touch my head every time I say that each week. I might have to stop that. Um, you know the score by now. This is a weird internet pub where we get creative people together. We have a bit of a chat, a bit of a chinwag, put the world to rights and hopefully we have a couple of laughs. All right, How are mate. you doing Mike? I'm not too How bad. It's been a week. It has been a week. Yeah. I've not, I've not spoken to you for a week. I think that's the longest during lockdown. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I, I've been a, a bit lost at home. I've been lost, Good stuff, right? Let's get our guests on, shall we? Yeah, let's crack on. Very lucky to welcome Keely Lane and Richard Galloway, um, Bug Light Theatre, actors, directors, writers, theatre makers. How are you guys? <laughs> not too bad, thank you. Very yeah, brilliant. just... Uh... Trying to stay sane. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying the sunshine sane. on a brighter note. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that um, trying not to go crazy, but I imagine your household, I imagine there's been some creativity going on. So I was working on a documentary until about a week and a half ago. So I was getting really jealous at all the creative things Richard was doing and like learning all the skills that everyone's learning at the moment. Uh, but I was, yeah, so I was working on that. And I was very lucky because, you know, income coming in and it was, a, you know, a great project and stuff. But yeah, now that's stopped. We've just kind of gone in overdrive of, right, what are we doing sort of thing. You've been working up until a week and a half, two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you're saying you're going stir crazy. <laughs> Yeah, because working from home, doing documentaries about the coronavirus, oh, been... it, it kind of gets a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, okay, fair enough. And also yeah. trying to obviously keep up with other stuff. And we've, we had a tour booked in for the autumn, uh, working with Cat Rose Martin and Kirsty Smith on their new play, Jane Hare. And so we've had to like try and quickly navigate moving all of that to next year and how all that's going to work. So it was kind of a bit of a frantic, oh, God, what do we do? But, I mean, obviously, we're in a better position than a lot of people because some people were mid-rehearsals. We moved house. You moved house, so... <laughs> oh, you moved, oh, you moved house before just, lockdown, oh, though, didn't you? Just before. Just before, yeah. Moved to a new house and you think, yes, new prospects, new city, everything, la, 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 la. And then your house becomes a prison. <laughs> um... <laughs> And you think, oh, wow, I, all I know is these four walls. What is going on? What is going on? Um, so you take up baking. <laughs> do, do you? Is that what you do? Can I? <laughs> Although I was cursing all the children in the world and their parents because they took all the baking products from the shops. And so when you're just little old me going, oh, I'll try baking, there's nothing there. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, like a, it's like a barren wasteland of yeah. flour and every other thing that you need to make a cookie. Yeah, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't bother. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't in the end. <laughs> <laughs> so the tour then, what have you done? Have you just sort of, is it postponed? Is it indefinitely? Is it what What have you done? Yeah, we've just moved it for now to spring next year. And then if yeah. we need to look at autumn next year, because we don't, because obviously we're very reliant on ticket sales. And if theatres aren't properly back up and running by spring next year, it will have a huge impact on the budget and what we can actually produce. So I think... There might be, you know, it might be pushed on even till next autumn, but we'll see. We actually contacted them just before lockdown happened and we were just like, I think we need to have this conversation about what might happen. They were actually quite relieved because they thought they were going to have to move some of their spring stuff to autumn. Um, so they were just like, yes, let's let's pop it in. So the moving to spring next year was, was really easy. I think they just don't know as much as we don't know there obviously scared for their own venue and, and whether it will survive this. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and in contrast to that, I don't know whether it is a contrast. Contrast might not be the right word. What? Um, how have the Arts Council been? What's their approach been? Great. They just said, let us know your proposal for when you can make it happen and uh, just revise um, revise your schedule. So right. it, was, it was a case of just letting them know for now because obviously they've had more pressing matters of emergency funding and stuff mm. to deal with. What do you think the Arts Council's approach will be to, to smaller companies, you know, like, like Bug Light? The thing is, I don't think they know when their normal grant funding will be next or if they'll do another round of this emergency funding. So I think they're just dealing with it, you know, as quickly mm. as, as they can. But it's, um, 
yeah sorry i've not really answered your question there no 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 no. yeah yeah it's a it's an answer absolutely it'd be interesting to see what they do because they're going to have a big responsibility I suppose the one thing to say is about small companies is I think we're often, not always, but more resilient than the bigger companies because we have to take 10 jobs to make it work because we can't be staff. I think we're used to going, right, well, what's another way around this? How do we survive without that? And, um, you know, you don't often have a budget for the year to do your admin. You just get on with it until you get your next project. So I suppose in that sense, it's not great because you're doing the work unpaid, but we always have. So until you get that funding you don't get paid anyway so it is your instinct that you're going to have to look beyond the you know the, the sort of the venues the buildings we've just got a little pot of funding from a company called right up our street in Doncaster and darts and um, and that pot of funding is literally to research and develop um how we can adapt and in this particular moment not in three months but how we can adapt now and test ways of um, with that particular project, it's called What's Your Story? And it's set in Doncaster and it's about uh, storytelling from the community for the community. So we're collecting stories to tell their own story back to them rather than just going, right, well, this is the theatre you're going to get from us kind of thing. I mean, we've done our own like isolation monologues and stuff and it was really nice for us to read loads of scripts and to connect to people, but I'm fed up of seeing them. And I'm fed up of seeing actors look like they're bad actors when they're not because they're just, I don't know, rushing learning lines and making do with what they've got. So I think, you know, the the stuff we're looking at doing with that particular project is potentially radio plays because I think, you know, you can play with Foley and have a bit of fun with it and, mm. and adapt it in that sense and, you know, work with radio stations on that, like, local stations. Mm. And the other thing that we've been sort of looking into digitally is um, there's a company in Northern Ireland that I'm working with at the moment um, just kind of a, a, as another creative eye on one of their um, productions and it's called The Machine Stops um, and it's a, a short story by E.M. Forster, and it's set in this world where everyone was isolated, but it was written in like 1909 or something. So it's okay. really crazy, and it's it's incredible, like the knowledge they had that computers would come and all of this. But what they're doing really, really fun, and I saw their last production called Operation Elsewhere. They're playing a lot with live theatre because I think that's what's missing from a lot of the digital stuff we're seeing yeah it's that live element and that playful element of oh my god something could go wrong at any moment and they're obviously they're using like the zoom backgrounds the virtual backgrounds and really playing with that form rather than doing a straight play online and waiting for the screen and there's actually so much you can do with it and it it's like a, a game theatre element so you're having that shared experience that a lot of, I think that a lot of the digital face is missing. So at times they'll spotlight the audience and ask them to do a chat. Like they did, yeah, it's much more interactive. So I feel like what they are doing is much more capturing the spirit of what theatre is, but online. And I think even post coronavirus world, I think there might be a place for this kind of theatre where it's just in your own home that you can interact with. That's really interesting. Mm. So what are the company called again? They're called Big Telly. And Big Telly. Their next piece um, is The Machine Stops. And it's, the tickets are £20, so it sounds like a lot. But if you've got a family of five around a screen, I think it's, you know, what they're delivering is, is really high quality. And I think what they're doing is valuing their art within this time frame, whereas a lot of people are just putting stuff on for free. Putting stuff on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you, and we'll probably talk about that later. It's similar to, you know, that interactive thing you get in pantomime and, and, and children's theatre, but it's done in such a, a clever, and as, as you said, it's they don't take themselves too seriously, so there's some really funny tricks in there where they're just acknowledging what this is, and, and when things go wrong, you accept it, because that is... It's, it's makeshift. It's it's really imp- improvisational. Well, um, they rehearse it properly, yeah, but, course, it, but... It, things do go wrong. It's live. Yeah. And yeah. I just think it's really, it's quite an exciting. And I can imagine pantos would work really well in this format. Like, you know, everyone's fed up of, I am fed up of being performed at on a screen where I don't connect with that person. And I think panto lends itself great to this kind of thing that Big Telly are doing. And I think I can see other companies following 
suit. Yeah. With the monologues and stuff, we're connected to so many writers that we've never met or heard from and actors we've never heard from. So in that sense, it was a really nice exercise in getting to know more people and spreading the net wider and yeah. reaching a much bigger audience. Like I looked at our diagnostics on Facebook and people in Hong Kong and Australia were watching them. And I just wow. think, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. 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 Having something like that, which is also productive, I think feels like a sensible right thing to do. Throwing it out into the ether just to join in with everybody else and join in with the peer pressure feels a little bit negative. Do you know what I mean? If that's the reason why you're doing it, is just to join in and feel part of it, then that's probably not the best reason to do it. But as you said, you know, you've managed to reach new audiences, Facebook page getting decent hits. That's productive. That's brilliant. A lot of times as actors, we feel very disconnected from the industry. And so we, we do things to try and connect. We go and chat to people. We email people. We do whatever. We go and see something. You know, we go to a press night or whatever it might be. At the moment, we can't do anything. No. So I totally understand people's anxieties that, that that feel like they have to do something to feel like the industry is, is still close to them. Have you got a song each for our um, playlist? A song each, eh? Oh, oh dear, you've got to pick one I'm as well. I'm so bad at thinking of songs. This is Richard. Well, mine is not any way an artistic or any sort of reaction to coronavirus or any pandemic. It was just one that flippantly came into my mind. So why don't you chuck on, um, well, I don't even know what it's called, Summertime? In the summertime, blah, 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 that one there. Ah, uh, uh, is it Mungo uh, Jerry, that? Is it Mungo Jerry? I don't Mungo, know. Yeah, I, yeah. I know the song. I know which song you mean. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. It's chirpy, it's sunny outside. Why not? <laughs> hey, absolutely. Why yeah. not? Great yeah. song. Yes. Let's let's uh, let's stick that one on. I hate this. It's like you know when someone says, "What's your favorite?" I'm like, I don't know. I don't have a favorite anything. <laughs> <laughs> just, just just randomly pick one out your head. And one, two, three, go. Um, Craig David, Seven Days. Oh, Craig <laughs> David. <laughs> So um, I know you've just sort of picked that randomly, but um, why seven days? Well, because <laughs> we're just like in a cycle of seven days, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Now, that, that almost sounded like you'd thought of that. Yeah. That's really, really good. It was quick. Uh, yeah, although the lyrics suggest it's something else. Um. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, good. Yeah, we'll have a bit of Craig. I don't mind having a bit of Craig oh, David yeah. on there. Craig David. It had to be yeah, abs yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good. Okay, okay. Most coronavirus thing you've done, Richard. The most coronavirus thing I've done. What classifies as a corona? Oh, this. Keely cut this. Keely. Yeah. The bottle. I, I was. I, I was thinking you were looking neat. My beard trimmer just <laughs> went there, and it's discovered that yes, I am turning bald. <laughs> well, it's a sad day. The best of it's us. It's a sad day that. Receding, receding quickly. So yeah. Yeah. That's 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 gonna be a, a whole a whole. I, I mean, I've been through the kind of I know it's happening thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, this is awful, and you know, locking myself in a dark room and and <laughs> and, and, and thinking a lot hard about it. Uh, but it's it's still not easy. <laughs> no. No. It's never easy. I don't I, think you ever come to terms with it. I want to say I started losing my hair when I was like 20. I'm now 42 this year, and Jesus, every day I wake up and look at myself, and I hate it. It's horrendous. <laughs> Why don't you have some plugs? Get it done. Because it's about eight grand, and I've just spent oh. 12 on a kid. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't but afford her now. now. Yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> She's got her. Well, by the way, they didn't buy her. No, no, no. Somewhere and that's not know. what happened. Yeah, I'm on some dodgy sort of back street. <laughs> no, clinic in Hong Kong. No. That's not what it was. She, she's an IVF baby, so she cost us a lot of money. She cost her, and she's continuing to continue to cost you a lot of money, mate. I'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah, she's bored of all the toys now as well, so we're gonna have to buy her some more. And it's like, yeah. Um, having three weeks of eating and drinking everything and now hating myself and going extreme the other way diet it got out of hand the drinking <laughs> it was like three bottles a night and we couldn't fit bottles anywhere else so i was like where there's no bottle collection what are we going to do with all this and i was like this has to stop could you not have just bought boxes of wine well they, they, they flatten down and go into recycling. It's fine. Not sure it solves the fact that I put like a stone on his three weeks. So, so you know. 
It got so bad that when I went to the shop to do essential buying, uh, and all I really wanted was wine, <laughs> I had to buy something with the wine every time <laughs> I went in. Like and what? What were you? What were you buying with uh, the wine? I came out with a sponge, packet sponge. <laughs> sponge. No, you didn't. I said to the woman, I've just got a really dirty house and got clean. Um, <laughs> I'm socially uncomfortable in in any shop. I don't know what I do on those on those things. I just don't. I'm, I can't comprehend those self service things. So I always make an absolute tit out of myself. Uh, and it's all, and especially, I'm the worst criminal. You know, I, I'm trying to do something naughty. And I'm, I'm, I've got five <laughs> bottles of wine and a, and a little packet of, um, you know, Skyros. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. And you feel like you're playing that game that you do at drama school, don't you? You know, like where you've got to balance the space or like be like run away from someone every time you go anywhere. Yeah, oh, that is true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Although but increasingly people are no longer playing that game. They just don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> people yeah, just don't get their training. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. What has pissed you off during lockdown? The daily briefing. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair yeah. Enough. I tried so long and hard. I was so dedicated to that viewing on television. I thought I'm I'm doing my bit. I'm understanding what's happening. You know, I'm really trying to see a way out of this and hoping that they're going to give us something. And week after week, I started to go. I can't watch this anymore. <laughs> it, it very just quickly it is you... just bollocks in it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. stuck it on today for that prime minister question thing, and actually, it was quite a good one mm. in terms of drama. Um, <laughs> Al Bojo was getting a right hammer in from a couple of people, and he just didn't know what to do or say. Is he is the, and is absolutely rabbit in headlights, isn't he? Yeah. It's, it's shocking. They it's all. Shocking. Are. That's, that's the most yeah. thing. They some did the uh, some somebody described him earlier as a off white well used pillowcase, which I just thought was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> was that that was on Twitter? That was on Twitter. I think it would just be you know just the general incompetence of of people. <laughs> Generally, doesn't yeah. matter words. I don't want to get too political, but yeah, just incompetence and. Yeah, it's the, probably the same as everybody else. Yeah, yeah. And stupidity of some of the general public as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we've probably answered this as well, but so what What has been your vice? Oh, God. Well, I mean, yeah. It's totally changed, though. When we say we've totally turned into exercise freaks, I've been really pushing it and being healthy, which is the first time probably in my life, <laughs> which I focused on being healthy and eating well. Saying that, I did buy a mango and passion fruit full cheesecake yesterday, <laughs> and I ate about two slices, and today I'm contemplating one after this. Uh, but I will run that 11K tomorrow. I He's been doing you. an 11K every day. You've been running 11K every day? Not every day. Most six days. days a week. Six, six days, days a week. Day off. Wow, that 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 upsets me a little bit actually. <laughs> it's insane. Like I, I can't even do three k. No, no, that's impressive. That is impressive. What do you reckon to that, Mike? Hang on. What? Sorry, I was just I, I was just on the chat then, so I wasn't on camera, so I've had to bring myself back on camera. Um, yeah, like exercise, mental. <laughs> <laughs> You've had to do it at eleven. If I, if I didn't exercise, I would have gone mental. So I had to find something. It has given uh, you because he was literally I was up the walls at one I point. I haven't been working, so yeah, and I didn't get yeah no no yeah it was a bit difficult to begin I, with. It was, it was it was tough. I am genuinely massively envious though because it's something which I wish I could do. It's something I and I know. Like the the stock answer is it, it's quite simple. You just go out there and run. Um, but it's because <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's like you know. Anyway, um. But it's something that has never been in me to be sporty. Like the most sporty I ever was at school is I was on the school volleyball team because I was quite good at serving. But it meant I could just stand at the back and do knack all. Well, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I'll sit at a school volleyball team. Yeah, we were the only ones though. There were no other year group. It's just because we did quite well in in class, <laughs> and they went. We went. We went to the same school, and I was uh, I was what, four, four, <laughs> four years below four years below you. Yeah, I piss think, off. Um. <laughs> Above. It was a couple of years above you, I think. Yeah. Or one year, I don't know. But I never remember a volleyball team. It was short-lived, because they, they started... And we'll get back to the serious topic at hand. But it was it was short-lived. Um, 
because we were quite good in class like there was a few, a few of us and they were like and the PE teachers were like yeah. we, we should we should enter you in this into the school leagues and we went all right yeah we did <laughs> one game the bollockers because we didn't do half the shit right and then we went ah oh, fuck off and just it sounds like a it sounds like a true underdog story yeah it? it's I like, mean it, enter you into a league it's not yeah. quite the Edmonton Oilers winning the Stanley Cup for the first time but no. you know it's um, no. my past glory yeah dodgeball <laughs> <laughs> You yeah. live and learn. But yeah, what were, you, what were you doing when Mike was uh, was doing all his volleyball? Oh, I'm getting pissed, probably. <laughs> I would have thought I'd have been in, I'd have been in the sixth form, so I had, it all went downhill when I was in the sixth form of that school. Um, happy days. What was the last thing, the last line that you said to an audience or or to camera? I think to an let's go with an audience. Um, it was Panto. Yeah, it was Panto. I don't know what he said. Uh, <laughs> you, you do it and then you forget it uh, at the day after. You were singing uh, it? No, no, no. It was something like, um, oh, isn't that sad, boys and girls? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I got the boo, then I got a nice boo. And, and, uh, Brilliant. You. So what were you playing? The Giant in uh, Jack and the Beanstalk uh, on stilts, believe it or not. Never done a day on stilts in my life. That was terrifying on a really high, high rate stage. <clears throat> You've never, on which stage was that on? Uh, it was uh, back in um, Ireland. It was like. Okay. A... And how, how raked are we talking? Raked? Really? They'd, they'd, they'd changed it from what it was, but there was still a definite slope, which was quite. Um, Quite the, the feat, really, doing dance routines in stealth yeah. and also yeah. chaos. So, yeah, I feared for my life many points. And there was only once, I mean, I went on training and stuff. They sent me on training yeah. and whatnot uh, with a really cool circus school. Uh, but um, there was one day I stacked it uh, because the trousers, the, the um, brace that they, the costume person had made, it snapped and it fell down and it just caught below the thing. So I just stepped forward, felt it mid scene in front of a nice paying audience. I had to had to kind of just, I, I played it off that I was just doing a dance and, and they both looked at me like I was some sort of clown and was just like, uh, I'm gonna work my dance moves. Hey, why do you get, I got a, <laughs> uh, it was like a gangster, so yeah. Excellent, because they're not easy to walk on those stills. It was a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, not easy at all. Fair enough. That's yeah. that's good. And 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 the rake stage, I, I, I absolutely feel for you. Keely, last thing. It was part of script works at Cast, and there's a lovely group of like sort of seven or eight writers there, and they they wrote short plays, and I just I had to direct, you know, all of them within a day, and then put it on. So I just I, I can't even remember what the last line would have been because we wouldn't have interrogated it that much <laughs> what was the so, um, what was the last piece though that, you, that what was it can you remember no <laughs> <laughs> what, what, the last the last piece i i assistant directed was um the miami show band in northern it toured northern ireland and ireland and it was obviously about the miami show band who were massacred and it was a musical which sounds a bit bonkers Cheery. about a massacre but um yeah, that was that would have been the last titled one I can remember. But I, okay. I the last thing in that was a song, like loads of singing, so it's not very helpful. <laughs> okay. What was the last thing you said then to an audience? Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you help as part of the script now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, then fair enough. Favourite moments? One of the most powerful pieces I've ever seen is Yerma. And um just the it's such an easy not an easy it's such a, a well-known stage trick but when the rain started in like their glass box i was just like this is just magic i don't know it's like such an easy little trick but i was like you know when you just breath gets taken away you're just like yeah and, and the piece just moved me beyond words i've never been like I just couldn't breathe for ages after watching it, just crying, and I was just so. I think that that piece had such a huge impact on me. Just Billy Piper's performance was incredible for someone that you kind that a lot of people seem to underestimate. She was just astounding. Richard, 
Oh my goodness me. Uh, I mean, if it's things we've watched, I guess I really like this musical, but I prefer the new, I don't know, should I say this? It's going to be into the world and then they'll all go, oh God. No, Girl from the North Country is a Bob Dylan musical. And I saw it a few years ago when it was first out with the, uh, the cast and that really got me. Uh, it, what they did with the music was just spot on. Really, really, really brilliant. Um, and you love her, that what's the face? Oh. Fiona Gallagher, is it? Have I made her name up? Oh, no, no. J- I tell you what, Shirley Henderson. Shirley Henderson, who usually plays these quite creepy, odd little characters. Um, she's a great character actress. But, um, yeah, she plays, I mean, it is quite a, a quirky character, needless, needless to say. But um, she's got a voice. My goodness, she's got a voice. And, and, and I love... I, I've got a guilty pleasure in musicals. If it's a great sounding voice, I, they'll take me away. Um, and and she really did. She plays a woman who um, is suffering from dementia and watching her husband have an affair with. Um, she's still understanding just before she falls into. It's really gorgeous, actually. That in terms of that element of the story, uh, and there's a, there's a really lovely, lovely moment where she's watching him dance with her and singing Rolling Stone. If you haven't heard the soundtrack, listen to the, the original soundtrack of Girl from the North Company. It is a banger. Okay. Um, Favourite job? Home Troops, probably. Uh, the biggest job I've done, but Home Troops in, with Cardboard Citizens was brilliant. But then Life and Soul was really exciting as well, doing that around the communities and, and going to Derry with that. That was a, that was a Red Ladder. Yeah, Red Ladder was great. Yeah. Tell you what, going back to the previous question, one of my favourite moments is probably with Life and Soul. Um, Rod and I... About went... yourself. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we, we went into a rather, I don't know, like um, Republican pub, I think it was, or maybe it was the other way. I, I can't remember. We went in and no one really had turned up. Uh, and the way that piece works, uh, you've seen it probably, is it's very much about adaptable to different spaces and you really are engaging with the audience and, and bringing them in. Uh, but this particular moment, um, we thought, okay, only a few regulars, the barman or whatever. And we did something a little bit risky, slightly dangerous. In uh, Derry, which, in, you know, in the Derry. Derry. And we go for like, <laughs> we've got an idea, should we just go with it? And I went, yeah, okay, let's do it. So normally rather than have a little area where I come in and do it all there, I kind of made the bar my playground without wanting the venue. Um, I don't know if that gets us in trouble. I hope it doesn't. But uh, it was free reigning all around this bar, sitting up with people, up, up at different regulars. And some of these guys were massive. And I thought, inside my heart was beating like crazy, going, I'm going to get killed here. And then I went behind the bar and made that part of it. And yeah, that's probably one of my most favorite moments, actually. And uh, right. yeah. Yeah, I love that. Right. That sounds great. Yeah. I, it's not like a job where someone else has hired me, but Bug Light's first piece when we did the house behind the lines and we, um, obviously you were part of the R&D for that, Lee, but then when we kind of, we did a second R&D with Ruth Carney and got our funding for that and to tour that, it was, I suppose it was just special because it was our first one and yeah. we integrated music and, and it kind of set the company off on its journey, really. So I think that was quite a special one. Yeah, yeah, and, and and a lovely first piece as well. Just really, really, a, a really great story. Which you know, there's all. It, it's always nice when you come across these little stories. You go, oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, so the piece is <laughs> um, about sex workers working um, on the front line in World War One in France. So we really tried to tell sort of the female war, if you like, that their own sort of version of the war so we're very much focused on on the women and it was three central characters and the men in the piece were more actor musos and they were kind of very much in the background and weren't a character they were just a few male characters that kept coming in and out but as you all know Lee when we first did the R&D it was so hard because of the war that once they entered the space and were a character they kept becoming more important than the women in the story so that's why they came kind of became every man rather than a character and yeah yeah it was it was really interesting to develop it and I just think the process we went through and um, was was a huge journey in terms of like developing a bit of a style and how we work I suppose as well hopes and fears I hope that theatres will find a way <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I fear they won't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 that's it. That's it. You took more dry out of my mind. Um... I think I hope that we don't rely on venues as much as we already do. And I think I love venues and I love the tradition of being in those spaces, but I think it's probably too much money invested in venues and not enough in people. And I think there's ways around. We don't need to be in that venue venue to get people seeing work. And I think it'll make people more adaptable. You know, outdoor theatre. You know, other companies are making theatre in blocks of flats and on an ice cream van and all those different lovely ways of of connecting with audiences in a new way that doesn't rely on the same people that always attend that theatre. So I think I, I hope that it's people grab the grab the challenge of adapting and managing to maybe create new models of working that's the biggest fear isn't isn't it that these venues won't survive all of this and whilst it'd be nice to adapt and find new ways nobody wants those venues to not exist anymore yeah. like you know they they do so much for their communities on the whole and and i just think it'd be a shame i suppose the other thing is as well like one of the risks of all of this that we were talking about earlier is not taking a risk on new creatives and new performers and all of that and just that you know these venues that are going to be struggling will have to get those big named people in to fill those seats and i think it was already hard enough for people so those people that are emerging or whatever word you want to use it's it's going to be even harder isn't it yeah yeah that's certainly a fear mike have you got anything um no <laughs> 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 Sorry, I was just kind of paying attention to chat for a minute there. But um, okay. I think um, that my big fit because uh, this is one thing I I never answer this question because it's I, I'm not the interesting person here. I've gone backwards and forwards on this quite a lot over the last few weeks, listening to people every week. Chris Lawson mentioned something last week where and and we, we've kind of repeated that sentiment tonight. Where it's the the people that the fear is of losing these people who are who are running these community theatres and are running these venues who are doing such great work and who are bringing it out to the community and doing you know like slung low in in have done amazing work in this pandemic of you know just not even theater stuff just practically going out and delivering groceries for people which is great and you know my big fear is venues close and they get bought now a week ago i'd have thought that's fine it's just like Woolworths closing and b&m popping up it's it's free market it's what we're told is good for the country and the economy and stuff i don't necessarily buy into all that nonsense because i'm a socialist power to the people um but that's kind of what you think and you go fair enough if that's what's going to happen then that's going to happen but the fear is the people who will buy those buildings buy those venues they're the horrible people who are in it for the money and they will buy those venues and they will stick peter andre in greece and tour it for five years <laughs> I mean, in a lot of commercial theatres, you're getting Peter Andre in Greece anyway. Yeah. Uh, but I can, I see what you mean. Like, I don't want Branson cashing in on the theatre anytime. Yeah, soon. you know, the the Virgin Leeds Playhouse, piss off. <laughs> you can just see you know, he, 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 the, the little uh, money signs are floating above his head right yeah, now. Yeah, and I bet there's, a, I bet there's an absolute room full of people sat doing business plans of, and they'll be earmarking venues and going. They're going under. They're going under. They're going under. What's the cost? What's you know? What can I get? Go on company's house. Let's have a look at their figures. And they are just the the shits of business who will who will turn it into just exactly that a money making thing. And that's I think where I'm at. I've kept, like I say I've kind of toed and fro on it. And you know, that's your fear. That's my fear. Uh, Keely mentioned Big Telly, but there's another company called Create, and they are planning to do a Jack on Jack and the Beanstalk um, uh, like thing. And yeah. we require green screen, and it got me thinking because I've been doing a lot of writing and uh, lots of things that I've been working on that um, I think would benefit from that kind of animation type thing so i mean look we're, we're novices so it's going to be a learning curve we're going to be developing it but as we're working with companies that have already used it we'll probably learn quite a lot uh, in that process and hopefully we can start making stuff and that'll be quite exciting yeah i said very much that one of the words that has sort of come out of this conversation has been adapting and that's yeah. what we've got to do yeah. um you know and i think yeah i'm always interested by the digital world and and that kind of storytelling so 
Hell yeah, I'm up for that. You have a little short film out as well, don't you, at the moment? Well, it's not out. It's the, oh. <laughs> it should be out. Okay. Um, it's, it's nearing its completion. They were just getting the credits and stuff on. Uh, but it should be out next month called Tide or The Tide. It's a beautiful wee film written by Liam Thomas. Um, and Keely was producing on that. Uh and yeah, it's, it's it's lovely. It's about a fishing community in Scarborough. So we had a, a couple of days filming on a, a boat in November. Was it November? Yeah, November. Yeah. Cold. Yeah. And, the, <laughs> uh, and the skipper who was on it, um, he, he thought it'd be a funny bugger. And he took us out on uh, a really rough day on our first day shooting. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there was about six casualties of people throwing up over the... Wow. Brilliant. Uh, wasn't i managed to survive it i actually developed some decent sea legs during the whole thing i thought i could live like this if you, want. <laughs> you know what the theater finishes i'm gonna be a fisherman gonna yeah be a fisherman. brilliant I, I think you'd quite suit one of those little kind of woolly hats as well yeah <laughs> i think that'd be great yeah it's, it's about generations of fishermen and the traditions versus the reality of this you know this modern world and um, the decline of fishing and how that impacts both the trawler and the fishermen, like the, the little family. So it's kind of covers mental health and um, how the industry has impacted the local community. Sounds good. Basically ready to be submitted to the festivals in a week. Oh, in a week. Oh, there you go. In a week. There you go. There right. you go. So the, 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 there might be a cheeky link coming coming our way, Mike. So I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Will you remember so to send me a... <laughs> I do forget sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> like a couple a few weeks ago with somebody uh, it was Anthony Lewis, wasn't it? And he was and you were talking to him about this short film he'd done and what do you think, Mike? And I'm like, I haven't seen this because he hadn't sent me shit. <laughs> but I'm like, I can't say that, can I? <laughs> but but yeah. You covered well. Well done, mate. I did, I went, yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen yeah, it since I'm... though, Anthony, and it, it's great. I I like it. Well done. Yeah, it, is, it is a good little film. I'm sure it's cool. Uh, okay, okay. Well, look, thank you for coming on and chatting. It's been amazing. It's been great to catch up. We need to, uh, as soon as we can, grab some coffee and have a moan about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thanks very much indeed. Thank you You're both, thank both you. looking well. Yeah. <laughs> I meant to say that earlier, when, especially when you start going, oh, we were drinking like three bottles of wine a night. Um, yeah, you, but I, the, you're looking well on it. So maybe, yeah, maybe you should stick with it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. This is four weeks of exercise now, though. So that's Fair enough. Enough. yeah, probably look like death about four weeks. All Richard's t-shirts are like falling off him. I'm like, your arms are smaller than my wrists right now. You're just losing weight quicker than I ever can. It's so depressing. Yeah, well, mega if you, run, if you run 11k a day, you're gonna lose weight like that, aren't you? I suppose. Lovely to see you. Thanks very much for coming on. Cheers. Thank you. See you in a bit. Ah, oh, oh. great at those two out there. Yes, very good. Another good one, Mike. Yeah. I enjoyed Even that. What? Did you? Oh, good. You you always say you do. Well, yeah, because, I mean, what's better to do, like, a couple of times a week than sit down and talk to creative people who are lovely? And we've yet to really have somebody who's been shit. And we, I want to get someone on who's horrible. You want you want to get a I Meg Ryan? Yeah, yeah. Keep an eye on social media um, and all the usual things. Obviously, like and subscribe and stuff like that. Thanks See? for joining us. Said it. I'll just say it again. It doesn't matter if you say it twice. I hope everybody stays safe and well. And we'll um, see you next week. Um. Oh shit. Hang on. Uh. Yeah. Adios from the bunker. Real titles. <laughs>